वेलकम टू द क्लास सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ द टॉपिक दैट इज अमाइनो एसिड द फर्स्ट टॉपिक ऑन द बायोमॉलिक्यूल सेट द अमाइनो एसिड इज द मेन बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक ऑफ प्रोटीन Now we know that proteins are important for our structural and functional aspects of our body, and for almost all living organisms. Now this is the basic structure of amino acid. There is a carbon, which has four bonds. Here, a carboxylic acid group is there, and then we will find. Amino group, hydrogen, and this R group, which R group is variable. Variable means this R group can change from one particular amino acid to another, and depending upon the nature of the structure of this R group, the name, the function of the amino acids vary. Now, amino acids. This is the amino part, and this is the acid part. That is the carboxylic acid. And as you can see, that is the central carbon. So this is the alpha carbon. As the functional group is directly attached to this carbon, so that is why this is an alpha carbon. And therefore, the name of the amino acid is the amma alpha amino acids. Okay. Fine. So, as you can see, that there is a basic group, amino. So, it basically can receive protons, whereas this COH group, carboxyl, they can donate protons in specific pH. Okay. So, at specific pH. This carboxylic group can donate protons, and this amino group can accept protons. So, as they can behave like base or acid under particular circumstances. We will see later when we will be talking about titration of amino acids. But what if an amino acid attains a structure like This that at the same time the carboxylic acid group has donated its proton and the amino group has received one. At that particular condition, the amino acid has a net charge, a net charge of zero. This particular configuration is known as Zwitteran. So Zwitteran is that when an amino acid has a net charge zero, that looks like this. And at the pH when this Zwitteran configuration is formed, that particular pH is known as iso. Electric pH by the notation pI. Okay, fine. Next, we will be talking about the optical. Activity of an amino acid. What is an optical activity? In order to perform optical activity, the compound must possess one chiral carbon. Now, what is chiral carbon? As you remember, the high school chemistry, the chiral carbon is that when the four bonds of the carbon contains different groups. That is A not equals to B not equals to C 
not equal to D. Then this type of carbon is known as chiral carbon. What can it do? It does rotate the plane of the polarized light. Let me explain that. Say, a light is propagating in this particular fashion. It can propagate in three dimensional manner, in all the planes. Now you place a crystal over here, which can allow only one plane of propagation. Only one plane of propagation. So when the light will pass through this crystal, it will be like this or like this or like this, whatever it is. So let us consider a single plane of propagation at the time. And this is now moving through a solution of the compound which is supposed to be optically active. What will you find? You will find the, pay, the plane of this propagation, the angle is now, the plane is now rotated. So you will find that it will there will be a rotation of the plane of propagation. Now this rotation can be either clockwise or anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise. If the rotation of this plane is clockwise, the molecule or the amino acid say will be known as dextrorotatable. Small d or plus. And if the otherwise, that is, if the rotation is counterclockwise, then it is levo rotate that is L or minus. Never get confused with the capital D or L. We'll be talking about that later. So this is a dextro rotatory and levo rotatory. So this is the optical activity, optical property of a minus. Remember. Say this is an amino acid. This is a tidal carbon shown here. Here the red is the carboxylic acid part, the blue one is the amino part, this is the hydrogen, white one, and the yellow part is the R group. Now how to draw this 3D molecule in a 2D way manner? That how to actually project this molecule in a 2D plane? That this is a 3 dimensional model. It is a three dimension and the amino acid actually exists in nature in this form. But you have to write it on a 2D plane. So how to do that? So let me draw this like this. Say if you look at this one, you will find that the red one is actually on the plane. Here is the carbon. The red one is the actually on the plane, that is the COH group. The blue, that is the amino group. Amino group is actually above the plane. It is actually facing you. So, I will draw it like this. Then, if you look at this R and H groups, they are below the plane. They are heading towards the back of the whiteboard. So we will draw this like this. This is the hydrogen and this is the R group. Okay? Now let me rotate it. It is like this. Rotate it. 
wrote it in such a manner so that these two this these two atoms or the two groups they are above the plane again i repeat we have to rotate this in such a manner that they are above the plane so after rotation it will look like this so this blue that is the minor group is now above the plane and the hydrogen is also above the plane this yellow group that is the r group is below the plane and the carboxylic acid is at the same position on the plane okay now you have to do another thing you have to tilt it tilt it that is rotation followed by tiltation then what will happen the amino group they remain above the plane the hydrogen it also remain above the plane and now both the r group and the carboxylic acid group that is coh group they are now below the plane you can clearly see now just think this molecule as a two dimensional one two dimensional one what is that just write this thing as this coh in h2 h then r and here is the fischer process here is the fischer projection of the amino acid you can see so from a 3d amino acid you get to know the two dimensional structure of the amino acids and this is remember is alpha amino acid as we have discussed so clockwise okay now we will be discussing about one of the most important topics under this amino acid that is the titration of amino acid students often get confused if they are asked that at high ph whether the amino acid will be acidic or basic at low ph whether the amino acid will be acidic or basic as we know that the pi at pi the amino acid is like this we have discussed it earlier this is a sweeter ionic configuration it remains in this form that the net charge is zero now two things can happen either you can add the base in the solution of this amino acid so that the ph will increase or you can add more acids so the ph will decrease so this is the low ph and this is the high ph these two conditions may be there what happens if you add more and more base that is if with the ph when the ph increases what happens with the amino acid does it become more acidic or does it become more basic or just it remains in the same condition what happens just try to understand the fact 
that if you add base in the solution, that is if the pH increases, the H plus content of the solution gets lower. That is the H plus amount or the concentration of H plus ion of the protons are lesser then this basic part this protonated part they are already having a proton now as there is less H plus ion in the solution and this amino group possess one proton it will release the proton in the solution the solution will not allow the amino group to possess this extra proton and what will happen to the COH group as we know that the general tendency of carboxylic acid is to release proton so he will be quite happy to donate its proton as it is acidic its general nature is to donate proton and again on the other hand as the pH is higher that is there are less protons in the solution the luxury of having extra proton of this amino group will not be tolerated anymore therefore the amino group will release its proton and therefore the entire amino acid will become acidic as you can see it is a drip d protonated condition that the carboxylic acid group is prevailing and therefore the amino acid is acidic now on the other hand, if the pH is lower, that is there are surplus, there, there, there is a surplus of proton in the solution, the pH is low, then it will be like, the amino group will say, okay, as there are so many protons in the solution, now I can have the extra proton. As we know that nitrogen has the lone pair and that is why they can have that extra proton and the CO group will not be able to get deprotonated and already as already there are so many protons in the solution so it has to become something like this it will have to be in COOH form, uh, form whereas the amino group will have its extra proton just because the pH is low of the solution that there is plenty of protons and that is how the entire amino acid will become basic so remember thus if you lower the pH of the solution the amino acid will be basic and if you increase the pH the amino acid will be acidic okay now I think I wish rather you will never forget this